Welcome back to Shane's Main Shop. Today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to assemble the rear gearbox of a John Deere 400. Uh, this is the gearbox that accepts uh, that has the power takeoff shaft from under the vehicle to it, and then comes out the back of it with this uh, shaft, so then you can run your implements. And what happened with this one? Now, this is the uh, this is the old one here. These two are the old ones. These two are the newer ones here. Uh, basically, what happened? You can see this one here. The bearings were blown right out of it, gone. Uh, there's a cap that goes on here on the back side that covers it all up, uh, but the bearings are gone, and that is where this one hooked into on the back side of this here. So that was plugged in. This stuck out through the other casing, and this would lock on. And what happened was, is someone had the rototiller, the top arm, so tight that it was actually putting pressure on this, forcing this at an angle, which ground the uh, bearings down because it was just being pushed. The shaft was pushed at an angle, so it just tore them all up. And in the process, once that happened, then this hole got oblong here. You probably can't tell on camera very well, but this hole is all oblong and not uh, tight anymore. So that's an issue uh, with this here. And of course, you can see there's no bearings. The new one, which is this one, you can see the bearings are still in place and it's all, it's in pretty good shape. So we get, uh, we're gonna be putting this one together. And when that happened, it also broke the chain. So the chain here snapped as well because it, um, you know, the, eventually what happened was when that when that bearing was completely gone, it jammed, caught, snapped the chain. Fortunately, the sprockets are all in good shape, uh, so I'm reusing those, and the shafts seem like they're in pretty good shape, so that's good. So I'm going to reuse those, uh, but I'm using two new housings, these two, and also a new chain. Everything else is going to be the same parts going back in. So we're going to set these old ones away, out of my way here. Now, I'm not going to get rid of this either because I have a way to, I'm going to fix this for a spare. But for now, it needs to go. So that goes like that. So we got to make sure we put all these pieces back in the way they go. That will be on that like that for a spacer. This slide out of here gonna flip over and this will slide down through here hopefully and that's why I had this under it just to support that so that shaft could sit down like that that's good and all this up all right and then this is the part I don't know how this is gonna go I'm gonna have to actually take all these out I'm running on this too because there's no more room uh, I've got this chain I'm gonna do move this chain to this one that's a rubber chain use this to level this thing up a little bit because I'm gonna slide this out I think in there, I guess. Put this on here. Like so, yeah, I guess you gotta put it on first because it would not fit. <laughs> I think the whole thing must be dropped down together, to be honest with you. Oh, here we go, here we go. That one started. Oh, look at that. Okay, that went better than I expected. And then, this tensioner right here. You see it sits into that. I'm going to flip it over because it's going to sit onto this one. Then you got the spring that has to be put in place. And then that chain rides right in there like so. And there you have it. So that's back together. Uh, the key is when you put this together to make sure all these pins line back up with their original holes. Now, the other problem I have, gasket. So I don't have a new gasket for this. So I'm gonna see if I can get the old one off and reuse it, or I might just use former gasket around the edge and hope uh, that does the trick. Okay, so I'm gonna, I got this part all in. It's all in place. I got the spring for that in place and everything turns good. So what I'm gonna do now, and I did a dry fit too. Now it fits tight, which is good. These pins have to line up with these other holes. But um, the old gasket, which I talked about, is just is broken and it's all greasy and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead, since I don't have one, I'll probably order one. But in the meantime, I'm going to use some um, former gasket 
and I'm just going to go and run a bead around this whole thing. And then you want to let this air dry until it gets tacky. And then you go ahead and assemble. A lot of mistakes people make when they use forming gaskets is they put it all on there and they put the piece together right away. Uh, that's not what you want to do because you're basically squeezing most of this out. You want this to set up a little bit so it has some, so it's a little bit stiffer, so it stays in place. It's almost not rubber, but it's in that idea. So you actually have a gasket in between it versus just squeezing the liquidy stuff out and have metal to metal. So you want this to set up a little bit and then assemble your rig. So it actually went on better than I thought it was going to. And I went all the way around and then I went around all the holes as well to make sure uh, we're not gonna have a, a leak. So we're gonna let this set up and I gotta take and turn that over and line these pins up with these holes. And then of course this pin has to line up last with this hole over here. So we'll let this set up for a couple minutes and let it get tacky. All right, well, I realized we had this thing all together, but learn from my mistake. I went to take the old one said, oh, I'm gonna put that aside somewhere and save it because I know I can repair it. And when I looked at it, I saw a piece still sitting in. It was sitting on this portion of the old one. I'm like, oh no, I missed a spacer. So make sure you double check you have all your components in place. So I had to basically, obviously, completely disassemble the whole thing. Thank goodness I noticed it because it would just would have tore up another set of bearings. Um, and disassembled it, and now I put a new bead of um, former gasket on it and I'll let that set up and get this thing back together, and then we'll touch base with you then and show you what we got all right so once it's all lined up what you want to do is put your two lower bolts in and your two upper bolts in make sure these bolts are going in this way and you can put the first nut on them and you'll know that uh, this is the pto that sticks out the back uh, not the one that's going to go under the tractor to the to the engine itself um, so these will stick out and this will make more sense in a minute and they're long for a reason so make sure you keep your bolts in order Next thing you want to do is take the mounting bar, the bracket here that actually mounts it to the tractor and also gives you a little tow hitch spot, is you're going to slide this up. I got this raised up on a couple electrical boxes there. Let me just show you because this is important. It makes it a lot easier. I got just a couple electrical boxes. Or you can use whatever. It allows for the little shaft to sit down in there, and it raises this up off the bench a little bit because what we're going to do is take this, and if you see how this is made, it's kind of like a channel here. We're going to just take and slide this up on like this because it won't it won't go like this you can't put it on like that you have to slide it on the end so you slide it up to this and you can see it's got a little cut out there then you turn this because this does not sit square so you don't want to put it like that hopefully that came of showing that yeah so that's kind of square with the whole unit but it actually sits at a slight angle like so and it's going to line up with all these bolt holes. One there, one there, one here, one here. So it's kitty corner to the housing itself a little bit. Uh, once you have that sitting there, then you can take this protective shroud that covers the back PTO. And that's where these bolts sticking up uh, come into play. And these slip down over the top of those. And then that lines up with these other two bolts here. Uh, so you can go ahead and put... Um, a couple washers on the top up here these top bolts and go ahead and put a couple nuts on that so those will stay in position then it's just a matter of putting your other bolts in place now uh, these bolts here and the ones back here get these spacers so you have these little spacers here when you slide the bolt i'll show you on the first one so you get a bolt the washer it's going to go down through and it's hard to see, but I can tip this up here, I think. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Maybe you won't, I don't know. Um, but between here and the um, gearbox housing, there's a space. You'll know if you're taking this apart. And this spacer takes up that space, so you're just not trying to bend this or put extra pressure on that. So you basically just got to slide this. I usually try to get it lined up here first. Okay, it's lined up. Then I'm going to slide this piece in there and get it to go down through the spacer. And sometimes you might have to use a pair of needle nose or just a, something you can just maneuver that around a little bit. There we go. Let's do the spacer and now it's going through the uh, case. And you're going to do that with these other four 
So you have those spaces in place, and then you're going to go ahead and tighten everything up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's no sense showing you all that process uh, so I can get that done. Um, there is one up here that's tricky. When I get to that, I'll show you that. Uh, let me get the other ones in first. Also, I might add, there should be one of your bolts that does not have a washer on it. And that one goes right here in this corner. There's not enough room for, the, for a washer to sit in there. So that one slips right down there. You still put the spacer underneath. And then that's going to go right down through, uh, through your casing. So that one is the only one that does not have a washer. All right. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. This is that one I was telling you about. All the rest are tightened up. Uh, this one here is slid in. Hopefully you can see that there. And the nut is right behind here. The only way to do it is I put the nut in a pair of pliers like this or anything. And then I slide it in there holding the nut. And then I turn the bolt until it starts the thread. There's no way to get a wrench in there very easily. You can't get your fingers in there. There's nothing you can do. So the best thing to do is get a pair of pliers so you can hold on to that nut and get it started. Once you get it started, then you can switch over to the wrench to hold it from turning but if you just try to use the wrench it just you can't hold it good enough to to get it in position to hold it from moving while you're trying to line it up uh, but again once it's started like this you're good and you can just go ahead and tighten it up that's probably the most difficult one and it's really not that difficult it's just you know, a little tricky getting it lined up now i'm trying to turn the nut not the bolt make sure that nut's good and snugged right up in there Ugh. okay well there you have it so everything is back together and i got that uh piece you'll see a little blooper here in just a second where i missed the piece and had to take this thing all back apart um but there it is uh the next thing i got to do is put the shaft back on that goes under the vehicle I don't know why there's all that space, but everything seems to be working okay. Uh, so yeah, the next thing is to get this shaft back on here. And uh, we'll probably do that as a separate video. So uh, thanks for swinging by Shane's Main Shop. This is the rear transfer case for the PTO on a John Deere 400 garden tractor. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Come back more uh, often for more videos. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you like and subscribe. And also swing over to a fellow YouTuber's channel. Check his channel out as well. And that is The Art of Doing. I'll put a link down in the description directly to his channel. Uh, so do me a favor and him and just check his channel. He has a lot of variety as well. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.